All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about the Sony FX6, specifically things that people might not have told you about this camera before you ended up ordering it, or maybe it just showed up on your doorstep and you're finding that there's a couple things missing to get it going the way that you need to. Now there are seven different things that I wish I knew about this camera before picking it up. You need to know these things before this shows up to your house and you start using your new Sony FX6 cinema camera. Now first off, and I'm not really sure why they did this, but the microphone holder in the top handle doesn't fit every microphone. In fact, I think it only fits one microphone and that's the one that's made by Sony. What ends up happening is that if your microphone's a little bit on the thinner side, you're going to need something to buffer the space between your microphone and it to actually fit in the holder. Now what I did was I picked up the these microphone spaces from Amazon. They're only 20 or 30 bucks and you can pick them up on Amazon. It helps give you a little bit more space so you can get your mic in the holder. That way you're able to get your thinner XLR microphone to fit in a thicker hole. I don't know, I have no other way to explain that. All right, and the next one's gonna be your variable frame rates and your slow motion settings on this camera. Now in S and Q mode, you can go up to 120 frames a second on the Sony FX6. However, you aren't gonna get audio in S and Q mode. And if you wanna change your native frame rate, say you wanna just go to 60 frames a second and slow it down yourself in post and still keep the audio, you only have the choices between 24 frames a second and 60 frames a second. So you're not gonna be able to keep your audio if you wanna change things up to 120 frames a second. That also being said, different resolutions have different frame rates that you're able to go up to. In 4K DCI, you can go up to 60 frames a second. And if you wanna get the 4K 120, you're gonna to have to go to the Ultra UHD mode, which loses just a little bit of resolution, but I think it's a decent trade-off to go to 120 frames a second in 4K. On top of that, at 120 FPS, you are going to have a bit of a crop as well on the sensor. So just be prepared for that. And in 1080p, you could actually use 240 frames a second. Now, I've never used slow motion that slow, but for some people that have very niche uses, then this setting actually makes a lot of sense. However, you are gonna be shooting at a lower resolution at 1080p. All right, so another thing you're gonna need to know about this camera is open a second savings account just to buy the memory and the SD cards for this thing. Now they do use CF Express Type A cards like you'd find on the A7S III and the FX3 as well. And they are really nice cards. They're fast and they're able to get the 4K 120 frames a second in S and Q with minimal problems. But what I also didn't know about this camera is that it's a little bit more forgiving when you wanna use cards that aren't necessarily meant for the camera settings that you're using. For example, you can use V90 cards for most of the settings and in 120 frames a second on V90 cards, you might get the not guaranteed media, but I've never had a problem with actually using V90 cards for all of my shooting modes. And you can even go down to V60 cards, which I don't necessarily recommend because if something corrupts or something goes wrong, they do give you a warning that that could happen and you run the risk if you wanna start shooting in some of the higher resolution and higher quality modes with something like a V60 card. Great if you wanna save some money, but at the end of the day, you're gonna get what you pay for. Now, one of the reasons why people buy cinema cameras is to get professional audio solutions, things that sound better. You can get over bad image quality if you have great audio, and the Sony FX6 has the ability to have great audio with XLR inputs in the top handle. But that's where the story kinda gets a bit whack, because the only way to get good audio out of the Sony FX6 is through the top handle. And if you guys wanna take off the top handle for gimbal use, or maybe just wanna use a different custom top handle for your needs, you're gonna lose all of those audio features. Now, I think this is one of the biggest misses on the Sony FX6. It provides so much features, it provides so many things that you can use this camera for, but the fact that once you take off the top handle, you're not gonna get any audio, I think that's a giant miss, and I hope Sony comes out with an accessory that could help bridge that gap so people could still use this camera in a variety of different situations, but they don't have to lose something as important as your audio. Now, another thing that I didn't know, and I don't know why they did this, is that the Long Op, the XAVC L codec on this camera doesn't shoot in 10-bit. It only uses 8-bit. Now, if you want the more memory-friendly setting on your camera, maybe you have long dock shoots or you're shooting an event and you wanna shoot in the long GOP format on this camera, uh, you don't have 10 bit, which gets a little bit annoying because I wanna use this camera for all of the features and I wanna get the most amount of quality on it. And sometimes I don't need the best of the best Kodak because I don't have that memory card space. And maybe I just wanna make it easier for me when I'm editing in post. So the XAVC L setting on there is great if you wanna save on some space, but you are gonna sacrifice using 10 bit because it's only an 8 bit profile. Next thing is going to be the raw settings. And basically what you need to know is when you are setting up your Sony FX6, if you wanna shoot in ProRes, as raw on an Atomos Ninja 5 or an Atomos Ninja 5 Plus or any external recorder that can do it in raw, 
you wanna make sure that you turn on your codec settings, that it can do RAW and HDMI and an XAVCI as well. That way you can dual record to the SD cards you have and on the hard drive. And if you're using an HDMI on the Ninja 5, make sure that you're using the RAW to HDMI setting because if you use a regular RAW setting, it assumes that you're using SDI and you're not gonna get any RAW output on your camera. Now that might be a little bit obvious, but when I started using the Ninja 5 on my camera, I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I just would plug it in and it would start recording RAW right away, but you have to dial those settings in, in camera in order for you to get all of those features. And lastly is going to be your Cine EI features. And there's one really important thing that you need to know when using this setting, is I don't set my EI setting higher than the ISO that I'm using. So if I'm shooting at my low base, which is 800 ISO, I'm not gonna set my Cine EI anywhere higher than 800. In fact, you could actually preset Cine EI settings and I set mine to 400 and 200. The reason why you wanna do that is because with Cine EI, it actually doesn't change your ISO. It just helps you expose your image. And if you set it too high, what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna have a noisy image because overall you're going to overexpose your S-Log3 at 800 ISO and it's gonna create a lot of problems for you later down the road when you're editing. So if you are gonna use a Cine EI setting, whatever you do, do not set it to a higher value than the base ISO that you're using. And the same thing goes for 12,800. Don't set your Cine EI to 20,000 on that high base ISO because it's gonna give you the same problems. At the end of the day, no camera's perfect and you're gonna have downsides and quirks to any camera that you get. Leave a comment down below about some of the things that you learned about your cinema camera that you wish that you knew beforehand. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.